uh, things like corn or wheat or, or any of our other crops, tomatoes, potatoes. Uh, so those are very heavy nitrogen users. But you have to understand how we developed these crops, okay? These crops were developed in the 1950s when input costs for nitrogen and phosphorus and potassium were very cheap. So we would put on huge amounts of nitrogen into a field. They would take their cultivars and select them under the circumstances that allowed them to grow well with very high inputs. Now, now so if there were microbials associated with these plants, we wouldn't have known because there's no, there's no visible reaction. There's not, nothing you can see on the roots. Okay, with the soybean and the legumes, you can see nodules. You can see nice pink nodules on the roots. And there's a, a visible reaction, a visible reaction of the plant, which we call a phenotype, you know, that you can see something. The breeders knew that this association was very important, so they would keep breeding plants that had these associations. With potatoes, wheat, corn, there's nothing visible, that there's a bacterium, a good bacterium living on these plants. First of all, you got to look to see if there's any bacteria associated with corn that could reduce input costs. It has not been done. A, we don't even know what kind of microbes live on the root of a plant. We have no idea. And one reason is there's millions, hundreds of millions of bacteria living on a root of a plant, okay? In a teaspoon of soil, you have more organisms than you have basically people in Canada. So who is there? Well, there's very, only today with the uh, very novel uh, technology with uh, uh, doing with sequencers that are coming out that we can actually get a handle in a quantitative manner who is there and then we have the sort of the genetic background in a database now that you can find out who's there. But I can tell you that we're, if we're pulling out a thousand bacteria out of a root now for examination out of a hundred million or so, 999 of those will be probably unique, that we won't even know who they are. They'll be brand new. Okay, so that we won't, this, so right now we're able to get that telephone book of who's in the, who's on the route, sort of, we still are, are very tentative as to identification, but we can actually pull single guys out and seeing if they have some, test them to see if they're beneficial or not. And eventually what we're hoping to see is we can go back and basically start to look at plants that have been thrown away because they weren't doing well under high, in, high, high input agriculture and select plants that do well under low input agriculture using these microbes. That's the idea. Okay, that is, we, we, and, 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 and breeders tell me that they have plants that they can put into soils with very low inputs and still get very good growth. And they're asking me, is it m microbial? What's going on? And, and that's what we're hoping to discover. So then what is the process? That's obviously a fairly big job to say, okay, we've got a hundred million things in here. That's right. What's good and what's bad? What's right. the process to do that? All right, let me, let me give you one clear example where this has been done. And this has been done with a disease called take all of wheat, which is a prevalent disease in the Pacific Northwest and parts of Canada too. And what they found was if you grow wheat five to six years sequentially, one after another, the disease completely disappears. Completely. Okay. So they said, well, what's going on? Why does the... Why does the disease disappear? Where they discovered that there's a bacterial cluster called Pseudomonas fluorescens. It's a yellow fluorescing bacteria on a certain plates. It glows, in the, it glows white under UV light. That's why it's called fluorescent. This bacteria produces about half a dozen very potent antibiotics that actually kills or prevents that fungus from infecting the wheat plant. Okay, once they discovered this, now they're able to, of course, uh, discover what rotations, what rotations keep the bacteria at high populations and what rotations destroy the bacteria. And now they're growing crops in sequence with wheat that keep bacteria high and they can test the soil by taking a DNA extract and look to see if these genes are present in that soil. They're not even looking for bacteria now, they're looking for genes that are involved in this inhibition of this disease. 
So you are now understanding what is beneficial for this crop and this is very much like the probiotics in human health you know what bacteria help to keep you healthy and there we know a whole bunch of them now right but the ones from lactobacilli from yogurts are, are improving your immune system are helping your digestion and so on so this is a sort of a probiotic approach in agriculture sure.